Hi again, third graders, Miss Ott here. Um, remember, I teach third grade at Gatewood Elementary. If you did not listen to the read aloud on Monday, I highly suggest that you go back and listen. Um, our read aloud for this week is the book Keepers by Jerry Hanel Watts and Felicia Marshall. Uh, and on our Monday read aloud, we read the majority of the book. So you wanna make sure that you hear that lesson as well so that you are all caught up. So if you are caught up and you are continuing along with us today, I'm just going to review a little bit about what happened in this story. So before I start, I want you to just tell yourself, what was Kenyon's problem in this story? All right. And maybe your problem or what you came up with sounds a little bit like this. So I'm just kind of backtracking, reviewing a little bit of this book. So if you remember, um, Kenyon kind of had a problem with one of the boys at the baseball field, and um, he also needed to get a gift or a present for his grandmother, Little Dolly. And um, he had saved up a bunch of his money in order to get this present for Little Dolly. But when it came time to pick out a gift, rather than buying something for Little Dolly, instead, he bought himself a brand new mitt. I think he was kind of trying to impress the kids at the baseball field. And where we left off, he was feeling pretty bad about it. So think to yourself, I want you to make a prediction about whether or not you think that Kenyon's problem is going to be solved. All right, let's see what happens. So listen really carefully as I reach the end of the story. Little Dolly wouldn't be 90 again. He couldn't do better. There wouldn't be a next time. Shoot, he didn't blame Little Dolly for not trusting him with her stories. He couldn't even be trusted with money and the stories. That was it. He could give her something. On little Dolly's 90th birthday, Kenyon and his dad helped her out to the porch. There were two presents waiting on the swing. Oh my, little Dolly gushed. She picked up the smaller present, laughing. I know what this is, she said. Every year, dad got little Dolly a box of assorted chocolates. And assorted chocolates are just like different types of or different flavors of chocolates in a box. I'm gonna pause there for just a moment, and I want you to tell yourself what just happened in this story. I also want you to think about, why did all of these people from town come to Little Dolly's birthday? That's a lot of people to come to a birthday party. Why do you think they all came? All right, here we go, all the way to the end now. They were her, I'll back up a little bit. Every year, dad got little Dolly a box of assorted chocolates. They were her favorites and she always hid them so she wouldn't have to share. I'll save these for later. She tucked the box behind her arm and reached for the other gift. As she picked it up, car horns sounded. Lord almighty, little Dolly said, what's happening? Happy birthday, Miss Bowles, shouts came from the street and suddenly the porch spilled over with people from the town. All of the friends little Dolly had made in all her years of living in Lexington. Mrs. Montgomery strolled up the walk with the biggest strawberry shortcake ever. Happy birthday, she said, setting the cake before little Dolly. Make a wish and blow out these candles. It isn't every day you turn 90, you know. She reached over and hugged Kenyon. The cake was delicious and everyone had a good time. Don't that beat it all, little Dolly said after everyone had left. Best birthday I've, little Dolly stopped as her foot pushed on Kenyon's present. Well, looks like it ain't over yet, she said. Hand that box up to me, Kenyon. Little Dolly ripped the paper off as Kenyon shifted from foot to foot. He started apologizing. It's not much, I know, not like a carriage ride or a strawberry shortcake. He stopped when he saw her eyes sparkling. She carefully lifted the gift from the box and delicately, that means like really carefully, and delicately touched the handmade book. They showed us how to do that at, at school, Kenyon explained, how to bind it and all, 
And inside I put my stories, she finished. A book of my stories. Yes, ma'am. Little Dolly pulled Kenyon next to her. Tears were spilling over and dancing down her cheeks. Seems that I was wrong, Kenyon, she said. A keeper don't have to be a girl. You've done a fine job here, child. Now I'm going to need to teach you a few things all keepers got to know. And then, well, you'll need to add some of your own stories. Maybe a few baseball stories, huh? Kenyon smiled and slipped his hand into little Dolly's. It was definitely a wallet bat day. It's a really sweet story. So what important things happen at the end of that story? When you think about how did Kenyon feel at the end of the story? How do you know he felt that way? Maybe how did little Dolly feel at the end of the story? And how do you know that she felt that way? Take a moment to think to yourself about all the events, all the big things that just happened at the very, very end. All right, so now we're gonna get some practice making text to text connections. So remember that in the story keepers that we just read, a keeper is um, a person who knows the story or the stories about their family, about traditions, about cultures. And those keepers are responsible for passing those stories down from generation to generation. So from one family to the next. So a couple questions I want to ask, and I want you to choose just one of these questions to write about for your writing about reading assignment today. One question that you could answer is, who is a keeper in your family? What story do you like to hear that person tell? For example, um, when I think of a keeper in my family, I think a lot about my dad. I feel like he's told me the same story probably about 15 times. And I always love to listen to his stories, um, especially about stories of my brother growing up and how he was a very difficult child to raise. Um, and there are stories that I'll just never forget and I want to always pass along to the rest of my family. So think to yourself if there is somebody in your family who is a keeper and what story that person likes to tell. I also want you to think about whether or not you would like to be a keeper of your family stories. Why would you want to be that keeper or why would you not want to be that keeper? I feel like some of us might feel a great responsibility from being that keeper and some of us might really not want to take on that responsibility. So for your writing about reading, I want you to choose one of those two questions to respond to, making sure to include reasons for why you think that, why you feel that way. When you're finished with your writing about reading, it's time to go into IDR. Make sure that for your IDR, you are reading a fiction story, hopefully one that you've been reading for a little bit now. And as you are reading today, you're going to be using self-stick notes or a separate piece of paper and finding those places in your book where important things happen. Now this is gonna be really, really helpful because at the end of your IDR, you have another short writing assignment. We are going to do a journal entry about what you just read. For your journal entry, make sure that you include the title and the author of the story. You include a little bit about what happened in the story. So what is the story about? And then take one of those important ideas that you noted yesterday or the day before or that you noted during your reading today and write what that important idea is. And again, most importantly, be able to explain why you think that idea is important. You guys got a lot of work for you to do today. Thanks again for being here and I'll see you on Friday.